stop being the chef. Now, it would be very difficult to represent the, the outcome for me of what Jeff's Jeff spoken about. But I'd like to challenge you with that responsibility. I want a paragraph from every single person in the room. Not by the end of the week, by the end of the day. Good. Email to me. Anyone who doesn't do it, come by the end of the week. Everyone here will email me a paragraph by the end of the day with your thoughts on today's session. By the way, I think it is, it is a, a request I have made. It helps me, it informs me, and it enriches the experience of those like you that I want to encounter. So, you know, and what the big challenge we have got is what will happen to the poor people? Well, the poor people from where I came from, and I grew up for a room outside the toilet, outside the bar, was that you made an individual collective noise. <coughs> You achieved and you overachieved. The one thing I have to check myself and discipline myself is to not overachieve or overprove or overdemonstrate. One of the prices of cultural disaffection, and the hope that you'll be included, is to do more now, my body, your spirit, your gifts, and your ongoing thirst for life. There is no poor, there is no rich. There's just a human condition and experience that must be overcome. I'm looking forward to the next week's session. Can we thank you everyone together to the session? doing what the late Fred Perry did. When you talk about the poor, Fred Perry came and broke through one of the most class exclusive sports of tennis. Northern man, three times Wimbledon champion, never accepted, went to Hollywood, made it, came back, and they had to accept it. Because you keep banging on the door with your energy, your efforts, and your achievements. And when he was asked what he would do, what was the biggest achievement he could do, he was very much wiser than years and numbers of experience and knowledge. He said, breathe in and breathe out. And you know, that's where I've got to. you just got to breathe in, breathe in, as I've seen on both sides. They are young men, predominantly, although not exclusively, who have become disaffected by a lack of wholesome education, common sense education, that has seen them switch off their emotional intelligence and become very extreme and only left with their primal instincts which are influenced by the fear, the ignorance that resides in the global community in which we live. Choice means that one should not impose on anybody what they have the human right to exercise, which is called decision. We have some very challenging and interesting times coming. That is why the Olympic truce is absolutely vital. It's not being used because of all due respect, <coughs> People do not know what it means. That is why I'm going to have to be service. And there are a few who are hiding in the wings. Sadly, they always expect someone to stick their head above the parapet. As I'm six foot four, and the parapet ain't tall enough. But don't watch all that kung fu nonsense, believe me, God's will. It's all right. Having been on the streets and watched 12 year olds in bulletproof vests and have them attempt to want to pull a weapon that might harm me, you then have to be able to engage in a very real way. They didn't. Because for the first time, they got frightened. And all I frightened them with was intent. You've got to have something to believe in. You have got to have something to belong to. And you have to have something to identify with. Those young men are unclear. But equally, Nick Griffin was vilified on the question time. That was not right. He has the right to express himself. And if we were getting it right, and don't forget, our democracies are still only young. The beauty of the democracies we have is we will get it wrong, but we attempt to put it right. Because the world could never have been perfect. That's why I strive for excellence. I know what perfection can do. It can destroy me. So I strive for excellence. The pursuit of excellence has been that journey. So when there's someone who's ignorant, it is their ignorance. And if I've got the time, I'll try. But won't waste too much time. But I'll find people of equal 
intelligence, intent and purpose. But at the moment we need to tide the tide of negativity and move it into some positivity. Again, your campuses will either be the breeding ground of great mutual understanding or misunderstanding. If you go to Salford University, it has the large, largest Muslim student internship. And it's a community I've been in on a couple of occasions now. And like everything, there will always be good and bad in everything that you seek to develop and engage with when it comes to your fellow man. But you must work at your relationships. It's another thing that few do. And texting is great. Network, social networks are great, but nothing beats the good old-fashioned human engagement and using all of that emotional intelligence and that currency that you have. They can lock them up, then they have to release them. Universities are crime, pretty bad places to further reject resentment. And tolerance, I'm afraid, is something I've had to learn in abundance. A tolerance, but not compromising the very first principle of values that you have. You have to have that golden line. You have to know what that principle line is. If people want to show their ignorance in such a disrespectful way, they've done so. You need to understand that ignorance, and then you have to look at how you can aim to improve their behaviours into some sort of societal intelligence. But they must respect the laws. And from what I gather, they haven't broken the law. But as I said, the consequence of free speech is you're not always going to get it the way that you want. You may not be the thing you want to hear, you may not be the thing you want to witness. Uh, what size do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I got primary schools. So they always ask me that question. Oh, brilliant question. I say it's a size seven. I fall over all night. It's a black and free. Makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> After the money asking. Final question. If you were in a prime minister, I remember what would you do if you were a four year founder? It wouldn't be a four year plan. Um, the, the most important thing that needs to happen now is to what you look like, where you come from, when in this country the rights and responsibilities that are affected the Quality Human Rights Commission, which I think has not been as it has not been as forthright in responding to the challenges because sadly that's what this country is about. It is about what you look like, where you come from, and what you say that will entitle you to have or not have. But yeah, for me, a youth ministry, um, President Mbeki in his presidency of South Africa had the youth commission in the president's office. That's what Mr. Cannon needs to do. But um, I equally believe that the select committees, I would give the select committees a lot more power. The select committees are where the real democracy is lived out. It is where the real cut and thrust of Westminster in a village. It always amazes me, they want us to be more cohesive communities, but they don't want to stay as a village. I'd like a Westminster community. Yeah, no, I mean, Westminster community, get rid of the Westminster village culture. A youth ministry, select committees be the more answerable and more important part of the machinery of government. <coughs> and a public <coughs> holiday <laughs> for culture. Parties <laughs> that doing public community, yeah, just for culture. Not sure what it would be, and sometimes we prescribe too much. But it'd be interesting to see what that represents. I'm going to try and turn the UN around. But, um, <laughs> to engage every citizen who lives in this country and without any rank or without any political motivation, present to them the notion that the rights and responsibilities that they are entitled to in their education, in their health, in the laws that we seek, and the environment in which they must be exercised and lived out are fair, accessible, and available to all. I would have a youth ministry. Our developing countries have ministries for youth, culture, and social affairs. I would have thought in this current climate, where efficiency savings be looked at all levels, we could not do better than to have a youth ministry with those responsibilities. You top slice, a percentage of what is youth expenditure, both in the positives of which education and health come, and the negatives of which youth crime, young institutions, all that negative that comes without being that bit right and the intervention, and then you make it 
an internet steerable photo with camera responsibility, and I think you start to see things move forward. Until we have a ministry for youth, unlike our European counterparts, but all too often in Africa and other countries who value young people, and we don't like them in this country. If you look back, it's a um, book, Industrial Revolution, workhouses were filled with children. They were slaves, the arts and dodger. And we go right the way through. Young people have yet, and by the way, you will always be feared until you understand the fears of those who will then pass over the responsibility to you. So, youth ministry, a citizen's charter.